a trailblazer, a change maker, and a record breaker. Three women making history. Yes, history. Right here, next on the Breakthrough Experience. I'm your host, Juanita Washington, and this is The Breakthrough Experience. And I'm so excited about the show today because we're talking about women making history, breaking records, changing things, breaking barriers. These women are phenomenal, and I'm so excited to share our first story with you, who is a personal mentor of mine and someone I love dearly. Jazzy T joins us now with the story of Janet Lomax. Welcome back, Breakthrough Magazine. I am Jazzy T, and right now I am here at the Rochester Museum and Science Center with one of the change makers. She is a Rochester icon. You've seen her on your television screens for about 40 years. Janet Lomax is here. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me. It's so good <laughs> to see you. It's great to see you as well. Um, now, you've been retired for a couple of years, but you've been remain active, working over at RIT, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But as I was preparing for this interview, I realized that as I was the new hire at News 10 NBC, you were retiring. Yes. So we got to pass each other in the newsroom as the morning show was going off and you were preparing for the evening news. And I just want to say it's such an honor to be in your presence. You know, thank you very much. And you know, I'm very proud of you. Uh, very proud of Juanita and thank you uh, and the things that you are doing but there that means something that this passing as I was leaving you were coming in mm -hmm. um, and it reminds me of how important I always felt it was to give back mm -hmm. to um, people who were younger than right. me uh, to assist in any way I could because uh, someone did that for me so this passing um, I'm giving it to you and you did, just the vibes. And like you mentioned, me, you, Juanita, we'd have a chance to talk off in the corner a little bit. Um, but you actually started we're here in Rochester in 1980 as a field reporter from Kentucky. What brought you to Rochester of all places? I know. When I was in Louisville, I was working at WAVE-TV, okay. uh, WAVE, and I had been there four years straight out of college. Okay, nice. And when I got the job offer to come to Rochester, people in Louisville were saying, don't go. Why are you going to Rochester? It snows in Rochester. <laughs> There's never any sunshine. Uh, but I was at a point in my career where I started out there in Louisville as a reporter. Mm -hmm. um, I was the host of a half-hour talk show. Wow. Um, and I had gotten some offers, but this one felt right. I got a phone call from Warren Doremus, who was the news director at that time. Right. Um, we talked. They flew me up here for a quick uh, tour of the station. And it felt right. But let me say this. When I came here in 1980, I planned to stay one year and move on. And I ended up staying at Channel 10 for 36 years. Wow. 40 years total in the business, but 36 years. So it says something about this community. Mm -hmm. It says something about the people in right. this community. And it also says something about that station. So when you came here <clears throat> as a field reporter, within two years, you were promoted to an anchor, not just any anchor, the first black female anchor to take over a weekend, a weekday new, newscast. Right. So what were you doing? What are some qualities that you displayed as a field reporter that you believe gave you that opportunity? Um, when I came to Rochester, again, I had four years experience uh, in the field. Mm -hmm. I not only reported in Louisville, but I shot my own stuff. And back then it was 16 millimeter film. Mm. 
and I was editing 16 millimeter film and I was putting the 11 o'clock show, new show together, editing and scraping that stuff off and putting that glue on. And so I proved myself there. Okay. When I came here, so I had four years experience right. as a reporter. <clears throat> but I think uh, there are a lot of people who want to get into this business because they want to be an anchor. Mm -hmm. And that's not the point. The point is to be able to tell a good story. The point is to be able mm -hmm. to do a good interview. Mm -hmm. The point is to have contacts in the community. The point is to be able to enterprise and come up with story ideas so that you are contributing to the newscast. Mm -hmm. So you don't just, excuse me, waltz in and plop down and say, I'm going to anchor a show. I'm sure there's some people who have done that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's important to have that background. And I think that's what helped me. When I came here in 1980, I spent a year as a reporter. I was promoted in 81 to produce and anchor the noon show. Okay. And then in 1982, as you said, I was promoted to anchor the five, I mean the six and 11 at that time weeknight newscast, and I was the first um, African-American to do that. Wyoma Best, whose shoes I tried to fill, <laughs> had been at Channel 10 for many years, major impact on this community. And I'll never forget <clears throat> the night that I was promoted to anchor the 6 and 11. When I came back into the newsroom that night, she was there. She had come in to be part of the celebration, and that meant so much to me. Yeah. Well, right now we're here at the Rochester Museum Science Center at the exhibit. There's over, over 200 women being featured. Janet Lomax is definitely one of them. Enterprising change. And you continue to be a leader even after you uh, went ahead and retired in 2016. You were inducted into the New York State Rod uh, Broadcaster Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And you continue to serve at RIT. What does it mean to you to be an enterpriser and a leader? You know, sometimes you don't even realize you're being an enterpriser or a leader. Um, there are some people who set out, who see an issue, and they set out to change it, mm -hmm. to uh, to adjust it uh, in a positive way. And then there are others who just go about their life, mm -hmm. and the impact that they have on others leads others to think of them as change makers. I think it's important that we learn, especially as women that we learn to speak up, to stand up, mm -hmm. to reach back, right. and bring others along with us. You know, um, I think those things, and to be true to oneself, you know, speak truth. I think those are some of the things that go into uh, making a change maker. And that's, that's challenging at some times. <laughs> it can very well be challenging, and it's scary. <clears throat> you're in a meeting. You're the only person sitting there of color mm -hmm. in the meeting, and something is doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. and you think, should I say something? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't I say something? Uh, and, and But, you know, uh, I had many years <laughs> in this business. And you grow, and you learn yeah. that you must speak up. Mm -hmm. You must speak up. And you also have to have some somebody that has your back. Right. That is so important. And so you talk about diversity and equity and inclusion. Uh, when I started out in that news run, uh, there were other people of color there. Uh, but I also had people who were not of color, who were my friends. Mm -hmm. And we were a family. I worked with Gabe Dalmouth, mm. Rich Funky. Yeah. The meteorologist was John Hamilton. Okay. Um, and we were a family. And I learned a lot from Gabe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who was like a brother to me. But yes, I was one of the few people of color. Uh, Vanessa Tyler came in as a reporter. She's in New York now. Nice. Uh, Lynette Adams came in at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, I primarily just focused on do my job, do it the best that I can do, put the blinders on, don't worry about all this other stuff mm -hmm. going on in the newsroom and people chatting and wondering this or wondering that. You just stay in your lane and do your job and do it well. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. Stay in your lane, stay focused on your job, don't get caught up in the gossip. And it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, 
because people were talking about you. You know, they were talking about me. I mean, people, they did. They talked about me. How did I, what was I doing in this role? How did I get in this role? I know there was that stuff going on. Um, but I focused on staying in my lane. When I was growing up, my mother in particular used to say to my two sisters and me, remember you're a Lomax, okay? Remember who you are and whose you are. I didn't understand it at the time. You know, as a teenager, I was like, what? <laughs> but as I got older, I understood what she meant. You remember who you are. So you stay in your lane. And you remember that you're jazzy. <laughs> and you do your thing. And people may right. talk. Let them. Right. Oh, yeah. It's an honor. Enterprising change breaking through barriers, being a change maker, and you continue to do your thing at RIT. For those who don't know, please give us your title at RIT and what you're doing there. Well, um, after I left Channel 10, when I retired, I said, I'm not retiring, I'm rewiring. Mm. Um, so I took six months and did nothing, sat in my family room and looked at it snow. It was great. I was offered a position at RIT as Manette Professor, okay. which is a program they have where they bring in professionals people of color from right. the community to share their expertise. That lasts one academic year. Okay. At the end of that year, I was offered a position as journalist in residence in the Division of Diversity and Inclusion. Okay. And I do marketing and communications, and primarily I'm telling the story um, and including diversity, inclusion, okay. equity, um, and there are a lot of great stories out there. Nice. And so where can people read that, or is that for just internally? Um, you can go to the rit.edu okay. uh, website, awesome. and then you'll find me. All right. Well, check out Janet Lomax there. She continues to inspire us, and I appreciate your time. I'm Jazzy T with Break the Magazine. Thank you for having me. Yes, no problem. Your hugs. Thank you. <laughs> wow, Janet Lomax always has such great wisdom to share. This next woman, fashion icon, real estate mogul. I can't wait to hear her story. Erica Bennett joins us now with Taisharda Thomas. Hi, it's your girl Erica here with Breakthrough and we are here today with Taisharda Thomas with New To You Homes. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Erica. Thank you. Ty, New To You Homes is a full service uh, real estate brokerage located here in Rochester, New York mm -hmm. and you are running this with your husband yes we are a full service real estate brokerage we assist our clients from credit to closing and beyond uh, we assist them with grants different opportunities um, we also list homes we help with building homes all of those different things we're an all-inclusive real estate brokerage i love that mm -hmm. how did you get into real estate uh, my husband forced me <laughs> <laughs> The story seriously is about 14 years ago, I was um, managing a program at the Urban League of Rochester and he decided to open the brokerage. And he said, you know, I need someone at the brokerage with me full time and that person is you. So I literally prayed about it for two years and every year that the Lord told me, you need to follow your husband, I said, Lord, that's not the answer. <laughs> That is not the answer. I said, I've been working since I was 14 years old. I'm not working on anybody, you know, for commissions. I need a paycheck. I need health insurance, all of those things for my family. But I one day decided to just take the leap. And I literally did not tell Chris. And when he called me, he said, what are you doing? I said, oh, I just gave my two week notice. Oh. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, I told you to do that a couple years ago, but now is not the right time. I said, oh, it's done. <laughs> So um, I never looked back, you know, I came to New To You Homes and I kind of brought that case management background with me and we've been flourishing ever since. That's wonderful. Now Ty, you've helped many people achieve their dreams of home ownership and you've actually written a book on how to do that. Tell us more about your book. Yes, so uh, last year I was able to finally <laughs> get my book um, out here to the public. It is a definitely a culmination of all of my 14 years of experience. So it is entitled The First Time Homebuyer's Handbook from Credit to Closing and on. And it is a journal. It's a journal, it is a how-to homebuyer 101. So it walks you through the process of prepping your credit, preparing for a mortgage, and even um, there's there's worksheets in there. There, when you start the process, there are little. 
um, wish lists and things like that so you can kind of keep track of your journey and you can help hold on to it after and it even has some things about tips about your now you own a home what can you do now checking your smoke detectors and all of those different things so and you helped me and my family yes. with our first home and I wish I would have had that at that time because and I, I had I, lots of paper yes. <laughs> And I wish I would have pushed it out before then. It literally took four, four years of thinking about it and pondering. Mm -hmm. And I think um, COVID, of course, yeah. you know, I was able to sit down, turn my phone off and actually get this book. Can you tell us some of the things that you actually had to go through and how you were able to push past that and get to where you are today? I think one of the main things was creating a name for New Two Homes is us being a an, an African-American brokerage. So sometimes, you know, we'd set up our houses and we'd say, you know, this is Ty Thomas from New Two Homes. And they'd be like, New, oh, I've never heard of that. You know, so it's kind of like you have to get beyond that creating a name for yourself for people saying, oh, you have a real estate brokerage and you're black. Do you only sell houses in the city? That used to be a huge pet peeve of mine. Um, I actually had to apologize to a young lady because I, I lost it when she said that. I'm like, why do you why do you think we only sell houses in a city? Um, and I, I actually had another situation where a gentleman, I addressed him professionally in an email and his response to me was, you're not my broker, I have no business with you, and all of those things because he thought that only my husband should be speaking with him. So th there, are, there were a few things that kind of took place, but I was able to let it roll off my shoulder. I think my grandfather always said, you know, you can't get um, personally caught up in business. This is business, and I had to remember that and put that first. Nice. With the many hats that you wear, how do you stay present in your own life? And what advice would you give other women to help them stay present in their lives? So one of the outlets that, um, that I, I created was Thai Time and it was a video blog and um, video a vlog and a blog um, and a little bit of just a peek into the life of Thai. So it was an opportunity for me to get together with friends, um, discuss different topics, and one of my good friends told me, Ty, people want to hear from you. They want to hear what you use, what hair care products, what do you do for fun, and they really want to know Ty. So it was a great chance for me to do all of those things. Um, we definitely, we have missed traveling. My husband and I travel a lot. We've traveled the world together. Um, we had the opportunity actually last year to stay in Thailand for a month. And I, I don't believe that I really understood the significance of that when it was taking place. You know, I wish I had cherished it a little bit more because it's been a year and a half now since we've traveled. But it was um, just a wonderful opportunity to immerse, immerse ourselves in the culture and to take a break. I'm never truly on break. When you own your own business, you're never truly on break. A lot of people say, Ty, leave your phone home. I could never. <laughs> I could never. I could never. My, um, the greatest part about being in Thailand was that we were 12 hours ahead of the game. So I kind of felt like, oh, I can respond to people and respond to emails and be ahead of everyone before they even wake up. And I was still working while I was there, but it, it, it still was a good getaway. How can people reach out to you, contact you, and learn more about New To You Homes, Thai Time? How can people reach you? I'm also on Facebook at Thai Sharda Thomas and Instagram. I have a Thai Thomas New To You, well, it's Thai Thomas Into You page. So all of those ways um, you can, I can be contacted. From one fashion icon to the next, Sharon Jones joins us with this week's Fashion Fix right after the break. In search of your next career move, consider Jordan Health. What makes Jordan so unique is it's you can really learn here. It's like family here. It's like family, like basically, yeah. I love it. I love that Jordan. <laughs> so I decided to come to Jordan because this was a place that I came to when I was a kid and my family chose to come here when we first came to America. So as a way to give back to those that are newly arriving in the community at large, I've decided to join here and be employed at Jordan. What are you waiting for? Do it. This is an opportunity for you to give back as well as for you to get. You know, I often say, you know, I think I get more out of it than what I actually give. So stop waiting. Go ahead and do it. Don't wait a second longer. Take a look at our open positions and apply today at jordanhealth.org because we are Jordan. We are Jordan. We are Jordan.
Welcome back. Looking for some fashion inspiration? Sharon Jones joins us with this week's Fashion Fix. Hi everyone, this is Sharon Jones with your Fashion Fix of today. And we're gonna be talking about none other than fashionista Amanda Gorman. So let's get into it. As you can see, Amanda Gorman is gracing the cover of Time Magazine in a bright yellow dress by none other than Greta Constantine. She was styled by stylist Jason Bolden. And if you know Jason Bolden, he has styled celebrity Taraji Hinton. And this is a beautiful dress. It highlights all of her melon and she has on her crown and her regal braids. So now we're gonna move on to the next picture of Amanda Gorman. The next picture we see her at the Super Bowl and she's donning a baby blue um, coat with embellishment and it has a crown and um, signature earrings. She looks adorable. This jacket is from Moschino's 2021 Spring Collection and she looks amazing in this dress. This has been a fascinating year, fascinating year for her as a uh, it pertains to fashion and being a national poet. The last picture that I have of Amanda is the one that she wore for the inauguration speech that she did for President Biden. She has on head to toe Prada. So she has on a sunny yellow jacket, and then she has on a white button up poplin shirt with a black leather pencil skirt and black heels. And she has on a red headband. Like I said before, everything's by Prada. I love her, I love her style. She is an IMG model and fashion brand, and I just love her and I love her story. If you like what you've seen or heard, please follow me on Fashion Forward Edition Facebook and Instagram pages. More minority women are getting into the business of self-care, but we're gonna tell you the story about one woman who started it all right here in Rochester, New York. This is the story about me time. So in 1996, um, I had an accident and I injured my back. And I received massages to help me manage the pain. And that led me to pursue a career in massage therapy. Yeah, so I went into business um, 2007. The industry for African-American women for massage therapy, it was tough. Um, I didn't get a lot of support from my community because people hadn't really seen a lot of African-American massage therapists. So I didn't really get the support that I needed from the community. It was something that was new and different and uh, wasn't really readily received. A lot of doors opened for me, a lot of opportunities and I was able to provide holistic wellness services for people who were struggling with anxiety, depression, stress, and also substance abuse issues. Yeah, so when I was in massage school, one of the things that I learned about was essential oils. I was so intrigued by the power that they had to impact your wellness. And so I would dibble and dabble in making products and um, loved it. And so I introduced it to uh, some of my clients and it helped them manage their mental wellness. Uh, just the mixing, the pouring, the stirring, all of that just creates peace. You know, it was my faith, um, prayer, and getting those answers from God. Him showing me how to move forward in my business. So I've made the bath and body products for a few years now, about 10 years. Um, I added the candles and teas during the pandemic. Um, it was something that I did to manage my mental wellness this past year. And so I decided to add those two things to my line. And I also rebranded and my brand now is Peace In Me. Massage, candles, baths, and tea. We are going global. There's going to be a Peace In Me store in every mall in this country. And it's gonna be a place where people can come and get a massage and get some tea and just relax and just be at peace. So um, my website is wwwmetime 4 you that's the number four letter U dot com. Um, they can call or text us at 585-301-7177. Just try to create a little peace in your moment every day 
just have some peaceful moments you know it will help you be at peace with yourself and then you can be at peace with others I'm your host Juanita Washington thanks so much for tuning in with us this week next week it's a man's world ladies how many times have we heard that James Brown made it famous but these women are making it memorable in the lives of everyone they touch. That's a next week's breakthrough experience. Stay connected. BreakthroughMag.com We just want to motivate ya. Just trying to elevate ya. And you we do believe It's Breakthrough Magazine Time is now we've got to show you all we want to always stand in power with y'all The time is now, we gotta show you all We want to always stand in power with y'all We just want to motivate ya Just trying to elevate ya And you, we do believe oh, It's Breakthrough Magazine